What's up, everybody? It's your favorite podcast, favorite podcast, Get a Bucket. I'm your host, Trey, as usual. I hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, for starters, happy MLK Day, of course. And, uh, you know, who's Martin Luther King? Well, he's a former pastor, social activist. Like, we, we know all about Martin Luther King, right? Like, the I Have a Dream speech. Pretty much, realistically, if he wasn't here, I don't know if I would be here today. Or a lot of African Americans, or minorities for that matter. So, his vision of just equality and coming together, I, I, re, I really do appreciate him and all he's done. Uh, as you can see, got the black black power shirt on. Had to, had to. As you can see, I'm like a comic fan, right? So I had to have it fit me. It's my show. So just wanted to give a tribute to Martin Luther King and, uh, you know, say thank you for you. Uh, thank you to you. I really do appreciate you. And, uh, you know, rest in peace and all that good stuff. Thank you so much. Now, on to the show. What do I want to talk to y'all today about? Very simple. Very simple. The Nets. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, what about the Nets? Mm. Well, so in baseball, right? In baseball, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take you I'm gonna take you on a journey, right? But we're gonna end up in a great destination, okay? So in baseball, you have well, you actually have nine hitters, <laughs> but we're not going to talk about all nine. We're going to talk about the first four. And the first one usually sets up the team. So that's pretty much the person who's going to get you on the base. Okay, he's going to get you at least to the to the first base. Maybe he'll hit you. Everyone has the potential to, home, to hit a home run, but the objective is to at least just get on the base. Okay, the second hitter, that's usually like your your sacrifice, if you will, your, your bunter. Like they're not expecting much. They're just trying to make sure that the first person who hit can get to the next base, to the second base. Okay, that, That's the objective, really. So then the third baseman, that's the person who you have confidence in, whereas let's say the first two base, the first two hitters do get on the base, that third person's objective is to either get them all home or get them all to the next base because the fourth hitter is their closer, all right? So notice how I gave the closer as like the final, the final person, you know, like save the best for last. Well, the others are considered... The first option, the second, the third, fourth option, if you will, right? Well, for this Nets team, it's actually fairly similar. I think Steve Nash should consider doing this. Um, James Harden as your first option, Kyrie Irving as your second option, and Kevin Durant, KD, the Durantula, the Slim Reaper, as they call him, he's your third option. <gasps> now, I know some of you, I'll, I'll give you a quick second to, get, to gather your thoughts. <laughs> All right, so now that you gather your thoughts, we're going to get back to it. I want to give you a moment because I understand that's a lot. Remember, from my perspective, Kevin Durant is the best player in the world, okay? Now, Kevin Durant, best player, but I say he should be the third option. Well, let's take a look at why I say that. But before we do that, I think we should go over some of the issues that some of you guys might actually have. So up on the screen, you should see as follows. Their egos, not enough shots. No defense, no depth, no leader, and then Kyrie Harden's weight and KD's nappy hair. <laughs> All right, so as y'all can see, I'm being like the majority of the majority of it is serious, and then the latter part will probably be a little silly. But as you can see, though, I want to give a quick breakdown on these here nets because I think it's actually very, very important to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. So we have. If you want to look at the goon squad, if you will, which is what I call the the ending five for the Nets, should be Kevin Durant, who is their best player. You have James Harden, who's a constant MVP candidate. You have Kyrie Irving, who's a clutch scorer. He can always get a bucket. Then you also have DeAndre Jordan, who's a quality a defensive anchor for them. And then to wrap it up, you have Joe Harris, who is an elite shooter. I, I'll say great shooter, not elite yet. Great shooter, top five easily in the NBA. That's your goon squad, okay? That's your death lineup, if you will, if you want to remember how the Warriors had one back in the day. So that's what I think the, the Nets goon squad is. But you also have a couple of uh, things to worry about, such as like KD's recovery, um, Harden's impact on the team, and then the Nets duo divas, right? Like those are the things you also want to consider. Now, in terms of KD's recovery, Remember, he's coming back from an Achilles injury. Now, that's while he took some time off, almost two years, I still don't want to rush him back just yet. I don't want a situation where we had in, what, 2013, 
where Kobe injures his Achilles after trying to will his team to, uh, the, to the playoffs because we were injured. I don't need KD putting that much pressure on him right now. So on his body right now. Get him, let him get his bearings back, shake off a little bit more of the rust. He still looks good, but again, he's coming off of an Achilles injury, which is a big one. So I want to just be worried about that. Now, Harden, we do know that Harden's able to carry a team. Like He's carried the Rockets the last half decade, and his best stars were Dwight Howard and Chris Paul. Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook. Sorry, Russ. So when you think about that, Russ didn't really fit that well. CP3 got injured, and Dwight Howard... He's okay. Like, well, he, he was okay. Great career. But at that time, he was, he's not going to get you over the hump. So that's what he's had to work with. Decent players, decent team. But it's been him getting the team over the hump. You have that offensive weaponry on your team to pair with Kevin Durant. Why not utilize that? And we've seen it work over time and time again. And he hasn't had the type of caliber that Kevin Durant or Kyrie Irving, for that matter, really are. Maybe Kyrie because of Chris Paul, but that's another story for another day. Now, the net duo divas, right? I know folks are worried about Kyrie and Harden. Um, will, will everything gel? Will they still be there? Will there be like any type of situations going on between them? Will Kyrie still be there? And will James Harden even like be fat still? Like, <laughs> poor Kevin Durant. Poor Kevin Durant. But on these on the court though, okay, on the basketball court, I think they can actually play well off one another realistically. They both shoot what 39%, if I'm not mistaken, from three. Well, Kyrie shoots 39% and James Harden shoots 36% from three. And when you package that up with their scoring ability, and they can also play make James is the better playmaker, but I think Kyrie has a better niche to mm, I don't want to say that actually. They're both great scorers. So they can easily play make off. They can easily play off of one another, and Kyrie has shown to be decent as the second option. James also likes to pass the ball, like that's evident. So it should he should his game should help funnel Kyrie's game into maintaining its like status quo. So if Kyrie's gonna if, K, if Kyrie's game is gonna not change, and James Harden is okay with passing, which he's shown to do, they can actually play well together. I don't see any, I, I should, I, I, I don't, ex I can see that. I can see something occurring, but based on how their games are, it can happen. It can, it can actually work out really well. Now, again, going back to the issues at hand, we broke up the eight that were on display. Let's talk about the egos real quick. Um, Harden does have, well, really everybody has an ego, but as I just stated, Harden is going to be willing to pass Kyrie. Like, he just needs to score. And KD just wants to play the right way. Okay? That's gonna be the that's gonna be the dynamic of the um of the situation. Now, Harden is a ball dominant player. He's going to score the ball, and it's going to be easier for Harden now that he's not gonna receive as many double teams like he did on the Rockets. Kyrie, again, like I stated, he can continue to attack the paint, continue to play make to uh, like what average four or five assists that that's that'll be solid for this system like that that'll be okay and kevin durant is the most efficient player in the league so he's going to be able to pick his spots whenever so the ego standpoint you shouldn't have to worry about because it's not like their games are going to get in the way of one another realistically like, it should not especially if you as the especially if steve nash like schemes it properly everybody follows along their games should actually complement one another now when you say not enough shots, let's take a look at this uh, of these stats real fast. Because I have here as follows. For the 2021, Kyrie Irving is averaging 27 points per game, shooting 50% from the field on 20 shots. KD is, shooting, is averaging 29 points per game, shooting 54% on 18 shots. And Harden is averaging 25 points a game, shooting 44% on 17 shots. Now, what that's telling me, well, let's look at the math here. In 2021 so far, the free or the field goal attempt for the team for 18 is 89. Now, if you add up Harden, Kyrie, and KD, you get 55 shots, meaning 34 remain. And you're spreading that amongst what 12 additional players, and realistically, all 12 of those aren't playing. And then amongst the players who actually do play, everyone doesn't necessarily have to shoot the ball a lot. So Realistically, 
their games are going to be able to fit. There, there will be enough shots on the court. And before you say, oh, well, they won't be able to play like that because whatever reason, let's let's look at some of the let's look at some of the big threes that have actually formed up in the past and have worked. Because the the Heat, the Heatles in 2013, James had 17 attempts. D. Wade had 17 attempts. Chris Bosch had 13. Oh, and I know that's a little bit lower, right? But the field goal attempts were also in the lower 80s as well. So there's a little disparity right there too. So you're getting more shots now. And you're also with the D'Antoni system who you're going to get even more shots with. <laughs> so just, just factor that in too. Then how about the Cavs in 2016? LeBron took 19. Kyrie took 19. Who is this? Who is, who is this other person? K-Love that everybody crapped on took 15 shots. And J.R. Smith took 13. Like, come on, champ. Like, let's look at the Rockets in 18, where basically everybody took 10 plus shots. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's going to be enough shots for everybody to go around, ladies and gentlemen. There's going to be more than enough shots for everyone. Now, we want to talk about the no defense, right? Okay. Let's keep it a buck with you. They haven't been the greatest defenders because they've had a lot of responsibility on their plates. A lot of people give that excuse to LeBron James. Fine. We'll attribute it here. Now, they should be able to defend because we've seen them defend in good situations. Kyrie, we've seen him guard uh, Curry, which is no slouch on the offensive end. We've seen James Harden go up against LeBron James and, and Kobe Bryant early in the days and even kind of later. And he, I mean, it's not like he stopped them, but he's capable of doing so. KD actually proved to be a very good defender, especially when he went to the, uh, to the, uh, to the Warriors. So, and he's also lanky. And he's mobile. Just saying. And then DeAndre Jordan is a good enough defensive anchor right now where you can get at least two more years out of him. And and Joe Harris isn't uh, he's average. Sorry. Like he's average. But you gotta, you know, you gotta fall, you gotta fall somewhere. <laughs> but their the point is their defense is at least good. And their offense is elite. Their offense is so potent. They don't need an elite defense to get the job done. They just need a good defense, and they have a good defense. So, again, people are talking about, oh, their defense is going to be bad. Well, you're not factoring in the amount of offensive weapons that they have on their team. James Harden and Kevin Durant alone is enough to get you to the finals. Kyrie gets you that extra cherry on the top. That's like, dang, they have that too? Tough. So, that, like, no defense, no problem, and they actually do have defense. How about the no-depth issue? Well, I got a couple people. I have a couple people in mind that I think you should look forward to. Uh, I have Dwayne Dedman. He's a seven footer, and last time we saw him, he was averaging eight points, eight rebounds, about a steal a game, and a block and a half. That's not bad, actually, low key, especially in a role that he would be that he'd be playing. Give him about fifteen to twenty minutes a game. Spell for DeAndre Jordan. You still get a seven footer out there, take the pressure off of KD, so that way he doesn't have to guard the bigs. I like that out there. How about John Henson? Only 6'9", but still gives you about a quality defender on the blocking from the blocking perspective. He gives you about 1.2 blocks a game. Not bad at all. I, any nice little hustle player. Nice quality role player to put on your squad. I think you can give him a little consideration. Again, you need forwards or quality versatile wings. Um, Scal LeBissier, he's not necessarily the best on my list. I'm not going to any particular order, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Just saying here that I think Scal being 6'11 and a quality skill forward, I think he could actually pair well with Kevin Durant and um, James Harden and Kyrie Irving. It'd be a stretch five for them, if you will. He's still lanky himself, so you can actually pair that up nicely. Or you can still keep him on the floor with DeAndre Jordan. Just saying, from an offensive perspective, he actually would serve quite nicely. Now, how about Demar Carroll? Quality wing, about 6'8", six, 6'9", six, and he can actually play four and three and two. Just saying, he's very versatile, and I think he would be, he's good enough to be considered for this squad. A very versatile defender. Also, Andre Roberson. Now, Andre he might need to improve his shot, but he also did play with Kevin Durant on the Thunder and Russell Westbrook and James Harden. So, I mean, like, he's... He's played with teams like this before. He's played with players on the squad before. Just can't he make a jump shot, but he's an elite defender. And I think he would at least be a quality body to throw out there. And guard against the LeBron James of the world and the Kawhis and the Paul Georges and Jason Tatums and the, and, and the Lucas and whatnot. So, again, those just that's a small list of some people I think they can actually consider to actually help their uh, depth out a little bit. So, and that's if they don't trade Kyrie, if Kyrie doesn't pan out. Um, you know, he only got one more chance. But, that you know, that's, that's another story for another day. Now... When we're talking about no leaders, the no leader portion, um, I think we actually are discrediting Kevin Durant, Steve Nash, 
and DeAndre Jordan. I didn't say Kyrie and James Harden. I said KD, Nash, and DeAndre Jordan. The reason why is follows. Kevin Durant doesn't get enough credit, ladies and gentlemen. And I think once he wins this championship, you have to give him a lot of respect. He has two premier divas on his squad, and LeBron James has not had to deal with that. Usually, LeBron James is the diva. You can make the same case for, Ky or for Kevin Durant, but LeBron, I, Kevin Durant is actually going to showcase why he's a much better leader than people have actually ex like, like, expect of him to be. And I'm kind of tired of hearing it myself because it's like bringing along Kyrie, who's kind of wishy-washy nowadays, and then James Harden, who I actually don't think is really that much of a diva. Like he had one little episode after how long with the Rockets. I think still Kevin Durant has to get a lot of respect because he's going to be the best player and his play style is going to showcase that. He doesn't have to ball dominate or shoot as many shots as Kyrie and James Harden in order to prove that too, by the way. He can also impact the game in other areas. So being a quality passer, improving your defense a little bit more, which he's already done. Just showcasing a little bit more overall well uh, overall uh, basketball knowledge, which he, he's capable of doing. I'm sorry, not basketball knowledge, basketball play style, which he's capable of doing. He's shown in brief moments, for example, in the playoffs. Bringing that out now, you can easily showcase, again, why you're the best player. And you don't have to dominate as much. And you lead by example. Steve Nash, you have to be the leader simply because you're the coach. Like that, that that's, I think every coach should be a leader or else you shouldn't be the coach. Like that's. Like, you're leading, the, you're the head coach. Like, it's, I'm not even going to get too much into that. And then DeAndre Jordan, you have to be able to keep other stars in check. And I don't think every star can keep every star in check. I think realistically, they have somebody who they vent to. For example, Kendrick Perkins stated that Kevin Durant and them used to vent to him. Like, you have, like I'm sure Udonis Haslam let people vent to him. Like, you have those quality vets that you really do respect and admire. Might even fear a little bit. And you got DeAndre Jordan, who's about, what, 6'10", 6'11"? And he's been around the league for a little while. Like, I think he's got some 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 cachet. Okay, so when I think of DeAndre Jordan, I think he's going to be the one who, who's going to be able to talk to Kyrie, talk to James, if stuff gets tricky. So, you and you need that type of player. So, again, when, when people say no leaders, I completely disagree. Those three players are, are those, well, technically Nash, but like those three, those three uh, people are actually going to showcase that the Nets do have leaders. And it's going to surprise some folk. I'm, you're hearing it first, I guess. <laughs> now, Kyrie, we do wonder if he's going to be there. James Harden, can you please get down the belly? Like, just slim that down. And then KD, my man, have you heard of a brush? Like, it, it, it is too late in the game now, sir. Like, I understand you just hooping. But you can put on, you can put on a little do-rag, you know? You can put on a little do-rag or something. You make enough money. So, let's get all that fixed up, ladies and gentlemen. Kyrie, show your up on the court <laughs> please james harden run your ass up and down the court <laughs> and kd my man go to walmart target even the dollar tree got i'll i'll send me your address i'll send you the brush myself <laughs> like please like all of <laughs> so again if the nets want to win the chip and keep these three players intact i think you should go as follows james harden is your first option Kyrie Irving as your second option, and Kevin Durant as your third option. Again, if you're doing a pick and roll scenario where you're having Kevin Durant come up and set the pick and roll for James Harden, well, James Harden's technically your first option. Then after that, okay, cool, maybe see what Kyrie's doing. Because Kevin Durant's going to get his spots. Or he's going to get his points regardless. And he don't need as many shots as the other two, as the other two. But those other two need those amount of shots to get that feel for the game. But they're so elite that you can actually be okay with them taking that many shots. And if it's not going early enough, you can always just switch it to KD real quick. So again, you want to preserve KD because he's coming off an injury and he's over 30 as well. So again, and, and James Harden and Kyrie are both have both shown high usage is okay for their bodies. I don't want to have to risk that with KD. I did not know you guys were still here. As, as, as you can see, we're at the back end of the show. No pun intended, but look, hope you all enjoyed it. And before you go, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow the IG account, share the content to anybody who's anybody. And most importantly, leave your thoughts and comments below. But 
I gotta go back and play Buddy in 2K, so let me unmute him real quick. Excuse me. Hey, boss, I'm back. Nah, you better catch this word. You know we get buckets around here, Tip.